Cryolophosaurus was a large, predatory theropod dinosaur from the early Jurassic period. Its name means frozen crested reptile, highlighting just a few of the traits which make it so remarkable. Cryolophosaurus had a distinctive head crest, unlike that of any other dinosaur. It was also one of the first predatory dinosaurs to obtain large body size. Additionally, Cryolophosaurus is one of only a handful of dinosaurs whose fossils have been found in Antarctica. While Antarctica is now a frozen wasteland, when Cryolophosaurus was alive, it was much more hospitable. Cryolophosaurus's fossils are found in the Hansen Formation, one of only two substantial dinosaur-bearing formations in Antarctica. The Hansen Formation was formed about 194 to 188 million years ago during the early Jurassic period. The Cryolophosaurus holotype was first found in 1990 by Dr. David Elliott, from whom Cryolophosaurus's species name, Elliotti, is in honor of. The initial excavation was in 1991, and in 1994, Cryolophosaurus had the honor of being the first dinosaur from the frozen continent to be named. Still, it required a second expedition in 2011 to fully excavate the skeleton. While the Cryolophosaurus holotype is not complete, it is estimated to have been 6 to 7 meters long and to have weighed 465 kilograms. Even though this is smaller than many later theropods, this was still an exceptional size for its time. During the early Jurassic, theropods had just become the top predators, and Cryolophosaurus was already larger than almost all of its ecological predecessors. Only a few, such as Phacelosuchus, truly outclassed it. Notably, the Cryolophosaurus holotype was only a subadult. Even though it was not yet fully grown, for decades this skeleton was still the largest known theropod from the entire early Jurassic period. However, the recently discovered Italian Chiratosaur, Salterio Venator, is now known to have been even larger, with an estimated length of over 7 meters and a much heavier build. Though Cryolophosaurus is no longer a record breaker, its crest is still among the most impressive known in dinosaurs. The thin crest is placed just above the eyes, and runs along the side of its narrow skull where it rises up. The crest has grooves running along it, creating a furrowed texture. Because its crest looks somewhat like the hair of Elvis Presley, Cryolophosaurus has been nicknamed Elvisaurus. As for what Elvisaurus's crest was used for, like the strange structures in many modern species, it was likely used for display. Healthier individuals would have been able to grow larger crests, allowing them to better attract potential mates and to scare off rivals without bloodshed. The crest may have been even larger and more eye-catching than in the immature holotype, as the display features of subadults are generally less developed than in full adults. Likewise, the crest of living Cryolophosaurus were likely much more colorful and vibrant. During the early Jurassic, crests were a very common feature among theropods. Though beautiful, such headgear was largely done away with in future theropods. Large head crests are very fragile, especially Cryolophosaurus's crest. Their relatives who retained small size, such as Megapinosaurus, wouldn't have had to worry too much about breaking their crest, as they would have focused on prey smaller than themselves. On the other hand, this posed a much greater risk for Cryolophosaurus when battling other large dinosaurs. The presence of crests in Cryolophosaurus and its contemporaries was likely the result of theropods having only just replaced crocodilian relatives like the Rawasuchids after the end of the Triassic period. As time went on, smaller, sturdier headgear became much more common. Some species like Carnotaurus may have even used their horns in battles against rivals or even when hunting. However, horns and crests seem to have been overshadowed by feathers, which at least in many Salorosaurs were, and still are, used in colorful and elaborate displays. 
As Cryolophosaurus was one of the first large theropods, it is important in understanding their early diversification. When it was first described, Cryolophosaurus was classified as an early member of a variety of derived theropod clades, ranging from Allosauroidae to Sharatosaura. It was also sometimes considered a member of the clade Dilophosauridae, along with some other large, crested species, such as Cenosaurus, Dracovenator, and Dilophosaurus itself. There were two reasons why it was initially so difficult to tell where Cryolophosaurus belonged. First, it has a mixture of basal and derived theropod features. Second, several decades ago, the classification of early theropods was flawed. While Cryolophosaurus was genuinely closely related to the species placed within Dilophosauridae, Dilophosauridae is not a true clade. Instead, it turned out to be a grade of early theropods that bridged the gap from the small, coelophysis-like species of the late Triassic and early Jurassic to the more derived theropods that dominated afterwards. Though Cryolophosaurus was not among these derived theropods who belonged to the clade Avarostria, it was one of their closest relatives. Avarostria includes a variety of theropods, including the abelosaurids, the spinosaurids, and birds. It was also the only clade of theropods to survive into the Cretaceous period. This means Cryolophosaurus was very close to the early radiation of one of the most successful branches of Dinosauria. It also means the distant ancestors of today's birds were once very similar to Cryolophosaurus. It should be noted that, since Dilophosaurus was even more closely related to the true Avarostrians than Cryolophosaurus was, it is unlikely the ancestors of birds had Cryolophosaurus's distinctive pompadour crest. During the early Jurassic, Antarctica was warmer due to being closer to the equator. Still, the northern coast of prehistoric Antarctica were very different from the image most people have of the Mesozoic era, possessing a climate comparable to that of southern Chile. The interior of the continent would have been even colder. Such a climate may explain why Cryolophosaurus was bigger than most other early Jurassic theropods. The bodies of animals further from the equator are often larger than those of their equatorial cousins. This phenomenon is referred to as Bergman's Rule. A larger body size reduces an animal's surface area to volume ratio, slowing down how quickly it loses its body heat to the environment. This brings up the question of whether or not Cryolophosaurus had feathers. While there is debate about which dinosaurs had feathers, there is a very good chance they were ancestral to the theropods, and perhaps even dinosauria. Their original function was for thermal insulation. In the case of the well-studied Triassic theropod Coelophysis, given the environment it lived in, and how high its metabolism was, it would have required at least a partial covering of feathers to have even survived throughout much of its range. Therefore, at least the direct ancestors of Cryolophosaurus almost certainly had feathers. However, large species are better at retaining body heat, so they generally have less insulation than their smaller relatives. Notable modern examples include mammals such as elephants, though even ostriches have less feathers than smaller birds. However, animals in cooler environments have more fur or feathers than their equally sized relatives from the equator. Perhaps the best point of comparison for Cryolophosaurus is Eutyrannus. Eutyrannus is the largest dinosaur confirmed to have had extensive feathers, and it was larger than Cryolophosaurus. Its native habitat, as recorded in the Yixian Formation, had an average yearly temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the northern coast of early Jurassic and Antarctica were more like the Yixian Formation than the Serengeti, Cryolophosaurus would have had strong evolutionary pressure to retain any feathers it possessed. While a great deal is known about Cryolophosaurus, the same cannot be said for its contemporaries. 
The only other named dinosaur from the Hansen Formation is the basal sauropodomorph Glacialosaurus. The bones of other sauropodomorphs, including early sauropods, have also been found at the site, though no new species have been named from them, at least yet. Other dinosaurs found at the Hansen Formation include an early Ornithischian and small, Coelophysis-like theropods. Cryolophosaurus's diet wasn't restricted to large animals, as the tooth of a small Tritylodont cynodont, a relative of mammals, was found among its stomach contents. While Cryolophosaurus was the king of Antarctica, it was not invulnerable. The bones of the holotype possessed bite marks, suggesting it was scavenged before it fossilized. The broken teeth of a smaller theropod were found nearby, having apparently been shed when it was feeding on the carcass. Notably, these teeth are attributed to a younger Cryolophosaurus, suggesting it was a cannibal. It is not clear what actually killed the Cryolophosaurus holotype, though it was once thought to have choked to death on the ribs of a sauropodomorph. However, these turned out to be its own ribs, which had been displaced towards the skull after it died. Overall, Cryolophosaurus was a very impressive dinosaur. It represents an important stage in dinosaur evolution, showcases how different the Earth's climate once was, and it possessed a particularly distinctive head crest. While Cryolophosaurus has had a few appearances in media, such as in Dinosaur Revolution and Jurassic World Evolution 2, it still remains somewhat obscure to the general public. Hopefully, its fame will grow so a wider audience can appreciate this stunning polar predator. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.